We are on, okay, this is Thursday, 21st of November, year of our Lord, 2019. We're going to go over yesterday's homework. That should have been the reason why you had so many, to get you reacclimated to working with fractions, adding and subtracting, because today we got to dive back into, uh-oh, what if the denominators aren't the same? Okay. No. Look at that face. Oh, Jordan. Don't be so uh, upset about uncommon denominators. Zacchaeus, I got the wrong book. What do you want me to do? The first rule way back in fifth grade was to always be prepared. Always trying to be Be prepared. And then, Zacchaeus, be here now. So, Zacchaeus, if I allow you to go get the book, the rest of the class, you'll be here now. Not present, physically. Engaged, mentally. Yes? Sure. Okay. All right, here we go. Here's your answers. Remember the deal. If you miss it, mark it. I cannot stop on all 40 questions and tell you how you got it wrong. That would be implausible. We've got to make sure that if you miss it, oftentimes you look at it and go, oh, I see. And you self-correct. If you still can't, then you and I get together and figure it out. Ready? Of course, number one was denominator, numerator. Hopefully nobody missed that. What was the error in number two? What did they do wrong in number two, Jaden? They added the denominators. I almost said Jordan. That's been a long time. They added the denominators. Everybody says... Come on. When was the last time you made that mistake? Third grade? To add the denominators? Once you get a common denominator, Dominic, keep it. Right? Because sometimes you got to go through a lot of work to find a common denominator, so don't mess that up. Number three, two-thirds. Number four, negative two-fifths. Number five, one-fifth. Number six, are you that confident or you got it memorized? Oh, you were, you were testing the be here now policy. Number five was one fifth. Number six, one and seven ninths. Number seven, one and three sevenths. Number eight, three and two thirds. Number nine, C. Just C. Number ten, D over five. Would one D over five count? Yes, one D over five counts. It's just superfluous. What? 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 Who's got the vocab down? One D over five counts, but it's superfluous. What does that mean, Dominic? It's not needed. It's not needed. It's overkill. Why would you write one D? Everybody knows if it's just a D, it's one D. It's more than, get it? Superfluous. It's more than needed. <laughs> Number. Number 11, 18 and three-fourths. Inches, of course. 18 and three-fourths inches. Number 12, 12 seventeenths. 13, one ninth. 14, two sevenths. 15, negative 11 twelfths. Did that one on the board yesterday. Number 16, one-third. Number 17, one-fifth. Number 18, negative one and two-thirds. I don't see a whole lot of marking wrong. That's a good sign. That's a good sign or a bad sign, LP. You know what the bad sign would be? That we've got apathetic kids just sitting there looking at it going, oh, missed that, but not marking it. Who cares? Let's go to the next thing. I don't know what to do about that. Number, where was I? Number 19. Negative one half. Number 20. Negative one half. Did you get spooked because you thought they can't have the same answer two in a row? No, but I knew that for tests. I knew you were going to say that. I'm like, can there be this many truths in a row? Yeah. Or this many C's in a row as the answer? I you can't think I like that. Can't do that. 
Trust yourself. Number 21. Eight fifteenths. Number 22. Negative 8 and 4 sevenths. Did that one on the board yesterday. Number 23, negative 8 and 2 fifths. New section. Got some letters in here, some variables. Number 24, 7H over 13. Number 25, negative N over 7. Number 26, A over 10B. Again, I repeat, number 26, A over 10B. Because 2A over 20B gets reduced to 1 over 10. 2 over 20, 1 over 10. A over 10B. Numbers 27, negative Q over P. Did that one on the board yesterday. Okay, number 28, can you take a sentence or two and figure out the problem rather than just have it written out for you? A euro, I'm sorry. A two euro coin is 25 and three fourths millimeters at its widest. A one euro coin is 23 and one fourth millimeters at its widest. You're, you're supposed to find the difference. difference. So when you subtract those two, you get two and a half millimeters. Amen. Yes. All right. Subtract those two numbers. You should have gotten two and a half millimeters. Number 29. 15. 15 hours for the first answer, how many you volunteered, and then two and two-thirds hours, one week more than the other. Again, find the difference. Number 30, six and a half inches. Number 30, again, six and a half inches. Number 31. 1 and 11 eighteenths. Number 32. Negative 1 and 2 fifths. Number 33. 8 20 fifths. Number 34. Negative 1 seventh. Number 35. 15 sixteenths. Number 36. 1 eighth. You guys handling these pretty good, even though there's three things there? Yeah. Uh, number 37, negative 8 and 1 fifth. Number 38, negative 11 twentieths. Number 39, 3 and 1 twelfth. And number 40, again, they're finding the difference. 1 foot 8 and a half inches. One foot, eight and a half inches. And it's time to move on to uncommon denominators. Yeah. To uncommon denominators. All right, I'm not going to waste your time going through page 224. We're going right to the bottom. You've done this since fourth grade. Maybe even at the end of third grade. So we're going to do one, two, three, four right now, and I'm going to do them on the board, and you're going to do them, and the goal is within two and a half minutes, we will be done with one, two, three, four on 224. Do not wait for me to do it on the board. What advantage is that to you? None. That's just called lazy. Yes. 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 One third plus three eighths. Go ahead and get working. You should beat me. You should beat me to the finish. Actually, I'm going to Two twenty four. Oh, I remember. <coughs> you should already be on number two, by the way. Uh, no. Not waiting for me.
See how I did number three? Hopefully you're all done in about 30 seconds. Hopefully you're not just copying what I did. You're looking at what you did and then looking at what I did and saying, yes. Everybody good? No. no. Okay, if you're not good, are you done? No. Okay. One more minute and we'll start going over them. Time's money. We're losing both. Yes, ma'am. I will be here on Monday. Thank you. I mean, not thank you for not being here. Thank you that you're letting me know. Now, I got a question. So you're not going to be here on Monday, but you are going to be here on Tuesday? That's She's interesting. Because you know you're gonna you know that you're off school Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little one day week gone. That's good. So think about it like this, Lauren. You've got of the next ten days, you only have two days of school. Yeah. Talking to Spencer? Yeah. Yeah. Why are you two sitting next to each other? That's what I want to talk. Because they're doing, they're changing my seat and all that. Wait, we did the morning to every day. I think that. Hey! We did that one up there. I said, you look at that. She's supposed to. I can't believe you haven't noticed. Yeah, we've been doing that. Yeah, they've been doing that. I'm trying to stay in my seat. All right, here we go. No. Back to the basics. Back in fourth grade, you started learning how to change uncommon denominators to common denominators by finding the lowest common multiple. Your LCM becomes your LCD. So your lowest common multiple for 3 and 8 is 24. If you were to go, you guys remember in your elementary books, they had those tables. You had to write all the uh, multiples. Then you had a column where you had to write the common multiples. Then you had a column where you had to write the least common multiple. Then you had a column where you had to write an equivalent fraction. Well, there's a reason you did that, to get you more practice. Do we need to do that again? Oh. No. Yeah. Here's the strategy, though. Here's the strategy you developed after you did all those drills. You developed this strategy. You have two denominators. Listen up. You look at the largest denominator, and you ask yourself, does the smaller one go into the larger one? How many developed that strategy? Because if that's true, boom, that's your least common denominator or multiple. If it doesn't, stay with the big one, go to the next multiple of 8. What is it? Does 3 go into 16 evenly? No. Okay. Next multiple of 8. Does 3 go into 24 evenly? Yes. Boom. Done. Does 4 go into 10? No. Next multiple of 10. 
Yes. Is 4 going to 20? Yes. Boom, done. Next multiple of 12, 24. Does 9 go into 24 evenly? No. Next multiple. 36. 36. 9 go into 36? Yes. Boom, done. Next multiple of 15. Does 6 go into 30 evenly? Yes. Boom, done. Okay, so if you haven't used that strategy before, if that's actually new to you, that's the way you should be doing it. And if, even if there's three, even if you're adding three things, choose the largest one. And as soon as the other two go into one of those multiples, that's the least common. Okay, once you find least common, you've got to create an equivalent fraction. One third is exactly the same as 824. You know why? What's he going to say? Because the guy goes into the pizza shop and says, do you want to order a large pizza? And the baker says, do you want that in three slices or 24? What? Three? I can never eat 24. Lauren, isn't that silly? Because if you get a large pizza, does it matter how many pizzas it's cut into? No, isn't it the same? the same? Okay. So if Lauren, if Lauren got her large pizza and she cut it into 24 <laughs> slivers. Well, I went to a, did I tell you this? Maybe my fifth grade. I went to a, a party gathering a month ago, and they got a big, it was a square pizza though, not round, and they had it cut into pieces like that big. Have you ever yeah. had it cut like that? Okay, so they got a sheet pizza, and they had it cut real small pieces. So you can just go by and get a little piece, and you feel like you're not eating that much, because, hey, I had a piece, and maybe it's a mental thing. Like, I had three pieces, I must be full. No. <laughs> but, so, if, there was, if they had their big pizza cut into 24 little pieces, and Lorelai ate eight of them, and I looked, and I looked at her and said, "Man, Lorelai, you ate eight pieces of pizza. They're only little pieces." And I had mine cut into only three pieces, big ones, right? And I'm like, "I only ate one. You ate eight. Isn't that silly?" Because I, I ate the same amount as her, even though I ate one piece. Do I have to explain the guy goes in the pizza shop anymore? No. Okay. Equivalent fractions. Once you got equivalent fractions, you go ahead and add. Boom, done. How many still have a problem with number one? Okay, next one. Make equivalent fractions. 15 minus 18. The denominators are the same, so keep it. What's 15 minus 18? Apply your rules for adding and subtracting integers. You get negative 3. Any problems with number 2? Yes? I have a question. Yeah. Can I continue to remind I'm going to add a few oh, on no. your class. Okay. Next one. 36 was our denominator. Now wait. What does the problem in the book say? The problem in the book says 5 twelfths plus negative 7 ninths. Does anybody not understand why I rewrote it like this? If you're adding two numbers that have different signs, what do you do? You find the difference. Everybody got it? You find the difference. So I found the difference. That's why I subtract. I rewrote it as a subtraction problem because my job is to find the difference. Now you might be thinking, wait, don't you have to use the sign of the larger one? Yes, I did. What's the larger of these two fractions? 5 twelfths or 7 ninths? The, what? What's the larger of those two fractions, 5 twelfths or 7 ninths? Seven ninths? That should be something you can do without giving them the same name. It's like the first one that was on your test. You had three of those you had to do, greater than or equal, equal to, and I gave you the first one was like something ridiculously small compared to something way bigger. This is obviously less than half, and this is almost the whole thing. You should recognize this as being much bigger. Negative 13, 36. Any questions on number three? Yes. So I didn't see that 36 went into motion. I'm sorry. So I or you mean they both went into 36? Yeah. And, and I put 108 and I came out with the same answer. Okay. So right. Because what's the point to finding the, did you hear what he said? He went to a common denominator, but he didn't find the least common denominator. Okay. The point to finding the least common denominator is then, he wouldn't have had to reduce. Make sense? You could, yeah, you could find a common denominator that's bigger. It'll just, you have more work at the end to reduce. Yeah? I went to 72. 
Same thing. You had to reduce it by dividing by two. He had to divide by three. Right, Brett? Next one. 5 minus 22, negative 17. Shall we move? No? Who needs any of these explained again? Raise your hand. Look, let's do the old, uh, I'm looking out the window. If I stand here, I see that house across the street almost clear, even though that window is not totally clean, you know, it's still got, it's like that kind of glass. That can't get but if I stand here, I could barely make out that there's something on the other side. I really don't see the house like I see it here. So where are you? Are you here with these four? Or are you here or somewhere in between? I'm somewhere in between. Because I can do them and then I get them right, except I'm really slow. Okay. So you're not in between just because you're not doing it as quickly as I do. That's not a problem. You're doing as quickly as you can, right? And the more you do them, the, the more quickly you'll go. Really, I don't want to move on until you got it. Everybody good? Sure. Yes. I thought that was an objection. Here we go. Next page, 225. 225, 5 through 8. You get started. I'll do them on the board. Let's see how we match. I wish. Rewrite. Listen. Keep rewriting them vertically the way you're used to doing fraction problems. W over 3 plus W over 12. I just wrote Okay. Right now, I know you're you must be talking to each other about the problems, right? Right now we're working on we're not being gonna be intimidated because they put a letter there. Dina, you're over that now. This is fourth month of pre-algebra. We are no longer intimidated by variables. What's the job to find the least common denominator? Remember the strategy, Rachel? Look at the smaller one. Does it go into the larger? Bingo. That's your common denominator. Nothing changes here. What's going to equal W over 12? W over 12. Nothing changes. However, when we get up here, what did I have to multiply 3 by to get to 12? Okay, so if I'm creating the equivalent fraction, I've got to treat them equally. Times 4 times 4. What's that look like? 4W. Okay, now I've got the same denominator. Are they, what do we call that term? Like terms? Are they like terms? Are they both W's? So what's 4W plus 1W? Bingo, 5W over 12. 5W over 12. Keep moving. Hopefully you get to the end before me and you are affirmed by my answers instead of waiting for my answers. Okay. Uh, what was that one? Day? Okay. Remember when Brett said he got his common denominator to be 108? Everybody paying attention? Yeah. Remember back here, number three, he says common denominator was 108? And I said, yeah, that is a common denominator, but you could have found a lower one. Many of you figured this out also a long time ago. You can always find a common denominator by multiplying the two denominators together. Think about it. Eventually, they're going to have the same multiple if you multiply them together. Right? So look at this. You got a 5 and a Z. What? What's going to be the common denominator? 5 times Z. 5 times Z. 5Z. Oh. So, my denominator, let me go back and say that again. Remember when we talked about got 108 and then had to reduce it? 
you can always find the common denominator by multiplying the two denominators together. So in this case, boom, there it is, 5 times z. I don't like when they make z's. I have a very yeah. hard time making a z that doesn't look like a 2. <laughs> it looks like a yeah, like that was the meanest thing you ever said. I didn't say that. Wait, who said it? Jaden. I just Jayden expected it to come from you. Wow. All right. So, how did I get from 5 to 5z? Micah, what did I multiply 5 by to get to 5z? Z! So, Micah, if I'm going to create equivalent fractions, what must I multiply 2 by? Z. Two Z. How did I get from Z, Evelyn? How did I get from Z to five Z? What did I multiply Z by? I multiplied Z by five. So if I multiply the denominator by five, I must multiply the numerator by five because I'm creating what's the word? Equivalent fractions. Got to treat them equally. So what's 2 times 5? <coughs> 10. Now I've got the same denominator. I'm subtracting. Isn't this a subtraction problem? Yeah. What's 2z minus 10? Are they like terms? No. Time out. Are they like terms? No. So can I combine them? No. No. 2z no. minus 10 over... 5z. Oh. Wow. That looks complicated, but it's really not. Look at David. The only thing that changed here is when I went to com when I went to subtract my numerators, I can't combine them because they're not like terms. So I had to write it as 2z minus 10. What's that? Listen, but no, because I can't, because I had to combine these two. So it's 2z minus 10 over 5z. Um, because I can't combine 2z and 10, and it's a subtraction problem. I can't say 2z minus 10 is negative 8z, no, because it's not 10z. 2z minus 10 over 5z. I'm going to stay with this one because this is brand new. Anybody not understand how 5z is my common denominator? Raise your hand. Don't sit there and not know. Does anyone need clarified why 5z is the common denominator? No. Okay. How do you make equivalent fractions? You multiply the bottom and the top by the same thing. Micah said, how did I get from 5 to 5z? Five I multiplied by z. So I have to multiply the top by z, 2 times z. Evelyn said, I got from z to 5z by multiplying it by 5. So i got to multiply the top by 5. 2z minus 10. It's not like this where I can combine them, 4 plus 1, 5w, because they're not like terms. So we've got 2z minus 10 at the top, 5z as your denominator. Are you guys way ahead of me? You done? Seven? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with seven. Five and three fourths, two and three fifths. Okay, do you want me to do number seven the book way or my way? Your way. My way. Did you do it like this? Five and three fourths. We have to change it to a next number. Plus 13 fifths. Did you get 8 and 7 20th? Yeah. If you try to number, then I probably would have. Okay, number 7. Focus. 
Number seven, if you choose the way Mr. Franken does it, you change them into improper fractions and give them a common denominator. The book way would tell you to do this. Separate them out like this. Five plus three-fourths, because five and three-fourths is five plus three-fourths, and then plus two plus three-fifths, and then they would say to combine the whole numbers, seven, and then add the fractions. To me, that's way more work than just going, oh, five and three-fourths, 23-fourths, and going the old-fashioned way. And finally, number eight. Seven and five, six, minus three and eight ninths. Why did I just do that? What is seven and five, six as an improper fraction? Yeah. 47, 6. What is 3 and 8 ninths as an improper fraction? 35 over 9. 35 over 9. My denominators are 6 and 9. I cannot subtract at this point because I don't have a common denominator. So Fredell's going to tell us what our common denominator would be. Um, 18. 18. Because, remember the strategy. 6 doesn't go into 9. Next multiple of 9, 18. 6 goes into it. I just decapitated the 18. All right. 6 times 3 gave me 18. 47 times 3. Anybody already do it? I, I believe it's 141. 140, yeah. Oh, yeah. 141. 35 times 2 is 70. This is a subtraction problem. So 71 over 18 equals 3 and 17 18 I believe. Yeah. No. 3 and 17 18 Because I know 18 times 4 is 72. Three and yes, three and seventeen eighteenths. Your homework. Your homework is seven through eighteen. Seven through eighteen. Only how many problems, Bella? Shh. Seven through eighteen. How many problems is that? 12. Good job. <laughs> Caught her off guard. Okay. 226. Numbers 7 through 18. Uh, if you're struggling, all I can do is give you more. What? No. What can I do? No. What do you mean? How do, listen. Uh, who plays basketball? <laughs> Dina, what? if you're struggling making free throws, should you shoot more of them or less of them? More. Okay, of them. why is that this such is an easy? So oh, this is math, so it's different. Yeah. yeah. What's more important, shooting free throws or math? Yeah. Shooting free throws. Yeah. Shooting free throws. That's a lie. No. Uh, yeah. Not yeah. if your career's going to be basketball. Oh, that's, that's a lie. I guarantee you, sports are way bigger part of my life than yours, and I'm telling you, that's a lie. No, you need math to be able to shoot. Is it only 226? Well, we already know how to count. Keep the angles. Basketball is, by the way, all, all about angles. All about where you're positioned on the floor. I mean, I know you don't think we can, you don't think about it that much, but. What? Mm. Wait, did you just say all you can do is rebound? Me? No. Because guess who wins the game usually? Whoever gets the most rebounds. I get a lot of rebounds. Usually. I love it. Don't you love it? 
Yeah, you say you